You agree, Mike? I think defense is a key. And he's going to pick his shots to assault. This kid will never quit. We know that. So I assure you that Robbie the Butcher will give him all he can. Whether it goes 12 rounds or not, this kid will be in it as long as he's as long as he's in it. Oh, they're both tremendously conditioned, but Mc McKinnon needs to make sure he makes no mistakes. That's the key to this fight. Hit and, and don't get back hit. to the lieutenant. Here's the lieutenant, Dan Hennessy. And his opponent making his way to the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert Barrage. Hi, here's Robbie. Big incentive of him. You know that Roy Jones Jr. is a partner of mine in the cattle business. Last weekend, we were doing three fights, uh, three world title fights in Corpus Christi. We bought a bull together, and I said during the ride up there, it was about an hour to the King Ranch. So, Roy, did you ever think about coming to New Zealand? I said, I love the Colonel. Can you put it together? I said, I just might. Got a haul of Dino. Got a haul of David Higgins. They said, yeah, we can do it. How much do you want? I said, he wants probably a million dollars. No, he can't do it. I said, let me talk him down. <laughs> Tell him about New Zealand. He's going to come. They can afford it. It's a beautiful place. Why wouldn't you want to come? Robbie Berridge. What an incentive for both these boys. Now, there's been a lot of banter, too, in the last 12 months between these two. It's a collision that has had to happen. Daniel McKinnon is the reigning king of the hill, and Robbie Berridge wants to claim backyard bragging rights, not just in New Zealand, but in Australia as well. The key for Berridge, he has that one-punch knockout. He's been behind on the cards against the likes of Serge Yannick, Kerry Foley, Joel Casey. Each one of them, though, TKO'd. They made a mistake, and McKinnon cannot afford to do that. If this fight goes Burge's way, the fight will be on the 22nd of March, and it'll be Paul Hampton and Barry Gilbert, and they will be promoting the fight in Nelson. All right, here we go to the lieutenant, Dan Hennessy. Take it away, my man. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. It is scheduled for three, uh, 12 three-minute rounds of professional light heavyweight boxing brought to you by Hydrate Zero. It is also for the WBA, PAPA light heavyweight title and the WBO Oriental light heavyweight title. Now, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters a ring wearing silver trunks with black trim. He weighed in at 79.2 kgs. He hails from Otrahanga, New Zealand. He has 29 professional fights with 21 wins, seven losses, and one draw, with nine big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing Daniel the King McKinnon! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing all black trunks. He weighed in at 78.7 kgs. He hails from Ratahi, New Zealand. He is the current WBC Asian Fist Boxing Council champion. He has 23 professional fights with 21 wins, one loss, one draw, with 17 big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing Robert the Butcher Barrett! It is now time for referee Johnny Lucas from Australia's instructions. Okay, boys, I've already spoken to you in the dressing room. Remember to set, defend yourself at all times. And remember what I told you, they come to see you fight, they don't come to see me referee. Touch them up. So we're all set come to go. Hill, can I make some noise up here? Ten point must scoring system, no standing eight down, no three knock down order, but it cannot be saved the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight in case of an accidental foul. We'll go to the scorecards after four rounds. That's the unified rules of boxing. Let him go. There we go. Box. This is round one again. This is scheduled for 12. A lot of ramifications for the winner of this fight. Big shot at Roy Jones Jr. at stake. McKinnon, you see, is a big, tall guy. He's got the gray trunks on and the solid black trunks. That's Robbie Berridge. Both of these guys can bang. 
Berridge definitely the heavier of the two punches, but McKinnon has got some pop of his own. Now, this fight has some spirit in it. It's had some meanness. There's been some banter played out in the media, which is unusual for New Zealand. Notice both guys with their lead hands high. The clash of lead hands, the classic problem when you're dealing with a southpaw. Berridge just dipping down, leaning to his left. Needs to vary his leads a little. McKinnon's been there before. It's a 12 round fight, so it's a long way, Colonel. Yeah, he's taking his time as Robbie. He's the south part to the left of your screen, black trunks to the right of your screen with the black, with the gray, of course, is Daniel McKinnon, heritage Scottish, hence uh, we had the Piper, Deirdre Bourne, come out with him. Just notice there, Berich, he answered the left hook with the right hook of his own. Hope he doesn't make a mistake of trying to answer a punch with the same punch it's an experienced fighter well mike as you know the way to handle a southpaw is a straight right hand down the middle so look for that but the thing with Burge is he's slick he moves side to side he circles to his left he'll plant and come back to his left then here he is he plants he comes back doubling and, up on the left hook there too yeah and it's important if the way to beat a southpaw is throw the straight right hand down the middle the southpaw with the right hand has to throw the straight right hand down the middle or the straight left hand yeah, well, in uh, McKinnon's corner, a nice little short right hand, just no wind up on that. You notice it's, it's like a piston from McKinnon. Paul McSherry in McKinnon's corner, one of New Zealand's best credentialed amateur boxers, multiple champion. So he will have studied the tapes. There's that left hook. Nice little right hand over the top from Berridge. Paul McSherry, good friend. I say down here, good mate, huh? Good mate. Berridge is controlling things right now. He's the ring general. So if there's not much between them in the first round, he's going to win on ring generalship. He's dictating when they engage. He's just changing up his lead a bit, which is a, is a good idea. He's coming with the, the, the right-handed up jab. Just gives McKinnon a different look. Now explain exactly so our listeners know, because uh, you're technical, Mike, sometimes, and I want them to understand exactly what you're saying. Well, the up jab's the one that often comes from the hip and comes between the guard as opposed know, to a boys, normal jab, which comes that. straight out, out over the top of the Stop glove. Right. So the up jab is thumb up from the right hand. Box. Looks like there's a bit of claret on the left eye, right eye of McKinnon. Well, these heads are going to come together with the southpaw. Their front feet are going to get tied up. When you fight a southpaw, you got to work to get your foot to the outside. Ferris is just going to be cautious about bobbing into that uppercut. The little mouse... Over the eye, that's the end of the first round, the first of 12 three-minute rounds. By the way, I give that round to Berridge on ring generalship. Well, listen. That's the first one. Huh? He'll work on it. Don't worry about it. You're not moving deep breathing. Take your rhythm here. Start slowly to pick it up. He's not expecting you to be smart here. All right? Nice and easy. Just want to see that nice tempo. Use that double jab to set it up. Change the angles and change the heights. All right? He's a little bit stiff, so are you. But I expected that from you too, you guys, at this stage. Nice and easy. As well. All right. Nice work from the yeah, corners, Colonel. They're, they're, they're relaxed, they're composed, they trust each other well. Look at the eye contact. Right. Your right hand will come off that jab. Don't feed that the weight. Don't feed that the weight. All right, we get ready to go to round number two. Again, as I go to Tim Cook's Hydrate Zero scorecard, I have Burge winning the first round 10-9. Here we go with the second round of the fight get here. The there with the Cloudland Arena in Hamilton, New Zealand. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan along with Mike Angove. And, of course, Clint Brown is with us and uh, the great Stephen MacGyver. I wish I had his voice. Well, the call from McKinnon to tap down the lead right hand jet. That's a left hook that's, uh, or an overhand left from Berridge. McKinnon is looking to tap down the lead hand of Berridge and come with a right hand of his own. Another good counter against a southport. Berridge is changing the looks. Sometimes he comes with a straight jab, sometimes he comes with a hooking jab. You know, it's good just to give him a different look. No, no, boys. You know, Mike, out of that. they call that parrying a punch, punch, one of the best ever at Box. doing that, especially as he went from light heavyweight to heavyweight, was Evander Holyfield. He was a textbook guy for touching, tapping down, and parrying punches. Here he's getting quite close with that left hand. Every now and then I like to see him fake it and come with a right hook over the top. Every, see my, every time I see Robbie, he 
he really amazes me because he's getting better and better. Now, this wouldn't indicate or be indicative to you folks watching around the country right now and around the world. This guy's under total control and total ring generalship right now. He's dictating the way this thing goes. Did the heads come together again? No, but that cut, it's over the rear right eye. And the Berich, there's his money shot off the right hand of McKinnon. The hooking left hook, left hand over the top. But uh, McKinnon cut over his left eye, or his right eye rather. They said in the corner, don't worry about it, we'll work on it. But early in the fight. Very early. Remember, if the fight is stopped because of a cut, and it's not an accidental butt, it's still official. It's a TKO. Remember that. Everybody thinks the fight's got to go four rounds. Very important the difference between a, a cut that's caused by a headbutt. Now, I haven't seen a ruling, but if that was caused by a punch as opposed to any type of foul, then it's a TKO if they stop the fight. If it was a headbutt, then it must go four rounds, then it goes to the scorecards. Now, notice Beard has changed the angle he's going on now. He's moving to his left, but he's moving a wide circle to his left, hoping that McKinnon is going to overthrow the right hand, then he'll come back with a left hook of his own, which uh, is against conventional wisdom for a southpaw, but some southpaws are very good with that. And that right hand is starting to find a mark. Beard's good at slipping outside of the outside of the right hand. Boy, he's got perfect timing, and when he's outside... He's avoiding any shots that McKinnon can get off. You now McKinnon just touched him up. But his positioning is perfect. When he comes in, he throws. Let me talk about the kill zone. He comes in, not really effective that time, but throwing all the way in, and then he gets out. Angelo Dundee, the great late trainer, used to say, hit and don't get hit. That's the name of the game. Barrett's just paused there for a minute, just uh, caged up. McKinnon, that's where he's going to be at home on the inside doing some body work. He's a, he's a better technical inside Corners. fighter. Another round probably for Berich though as we head into the towels. Definitely, Mike, I go with you on that one. I get Berich winning the first two. Based on effective aggressiveness, he's landing more punches. Just that on the back of his neck, please. You're good. You're good. You're looking good. And that could have been the shot that opened up the cut. Yes, it was. Straight away, good work by the cameraman. Great work. It's high on the eyebrows, not too bad at this point, but 12 rounds is a long time, and it's Berridge's money shot, the overhand or hooking left hand. All right, nothing's happening, create something. All right, be smart with it, create it. It was interesting in the corner, Vasco Kovac had said, they're not expecting you to be smart, they're expecting you to come out and try and bomb. Which means there's a lot of thought gone into this bout strategically. A lot on the line, the PABA light heavyweight title and the WBO Oriental light heavyweight title. All right, here we go to round number three, the Colonel Bob Sheridan and Mike Angle. We get Clint Brown with us down here on the floor. Stephen MacGyver upstairs and Tracy's running around here doing a great job too. Thank the whole crew here as we go to the third round. Remember that right eye of McKinnon, a clean punch. If this would be stopped, Burridge would win the fight. Well, Burridge is uh, like the gun for that nice straight left hand again. And Berridge just getting outside of that right hand, slipping it nicely. McKinnon's looking to set it up. That's a nice right hand body shot there. Just some variation from Berridge. You know, McKinnon did a nice job getting to him with that hook. But look at Burridge turning up and, uh, Hello, against the taller guy. As you said, Mike, he loves to fight on the inside, Bucks. does McKinnon. He's a brawler. Berridge, he's tied it up on the inside quite well there, recognizing that uh, that's where McKinnon is his strength. Getting closer with the right hand, though, McKinnon. Notice our right uh, left hook after it though. Yeah, notice notice McKinnon now. He's got a little more confidence He get that one was taken on the gloves did a nice job Fires out solid right in right back comes uh, Berridge Berridge is fighting a perfect fight to this point and it's a good contest because McKinnon is very quick on his feet He's getting his jab off pretty good. This might be McKinnon's best round to this point but again, Berridge is the aggressor. Nice little uppercut on the inside. He turns himself back out of the center ring. McKinnon switches to southpaw. Unusual. Often right that's on, the boys. time when you attack a right. guy who's not right. Step back, traditionally punch. a switcher. McKinnon certainly not. I don't like it for three reasons, and I've said this before. When a guy switches to the other way, he loses power, he gets hit more, and he doesn't have as much strength at all. And okay, box. you'll notice that he'll lose accuracy in punches. So it's not a good idea 
to switch unless you've trained to switch. And that's probably the key, someone who's trained to switch and, and is very proficient at it. And if you are going to switch, you need your rear hand power. Well, there he goes back to uh, orthodox now. It's, Just a bad, it's a bad deal too, Mike, as you know, as a fighter yourself, you get caught in that switch, you can get nailed and get knocked out too. Very dangerous. Taking those shots on the glove and then just skipping out of trouble. Now both of these boys are getting into their work. They've warmed up nicely. 36 seconds, 35, 34, 33 in the third round. McKinnon just making Berridge reach a little. Just needs to go back to the game where he's sharp. Against a fighter like McKinnon. Doubling up on his right hand with a little inside up and cut afterwards. This is frustrating, Mike, for Guy who's as good an athlete as McKinnon, but he's not as good a boxer and he's not as good a fighter as the man he's in against. And he's a great athlete, he's a great kid. Nothing's going his way right now and it's frustrating as the blood trickles from the eye. I like the way he turned out there though. Corners. Turned out nicely. Much closer around that one. Marriage the aggressor, landed the bigger shot still, but McKinnon showing signs he's warming to his work. Yeah, he's lost every round, but it's competitive. And then, of course, there's the cut. Not by this fan, but on the other side. He's starting to start fucking opening up. Start a long right hand for a long... Now you have to switch on and get that timing on, all right? When he comes in, there was that left hand there. Do not overdo it. Get your timing. Get that heart rate down. Look at it. Hands up. Defense after offense. Offense after defense. He will jump into it. She make what a Just nice control corner, huh? Get something going. There's a lot of trust in there. I think you'll leave the right hand, but don't bend at the back. Come back with a left hook. All right? If you're landing that left hook, come back with another right hand. All right? On point. Don't bend at the back. Nice and tall. Great back advice up. from Paul McSherry, being a southpaw myself. You're so used to slipping outside of the right hand, it's often you forget about the left hook. That Stay stiffens there. you up as you come back from slipping the right hand. So great advice from McSherry. Box round four. All right, here we go. Round number four. Claude Lands Arena, Hamilton, New Zealand. You people that are watching outside the country, you want to come to this town. It's beautiful here. Good work from both boys, evading shots. And uh, I noticed McKinnon earlier in that exchange. You remembered what he was told in the corner. Stop. He threw the left hook after the Stop right back. hand. In the solid Box. black is Berridge. In the silver and black is McKinnon. Don't hold, boys. Work out of that. It's, Work uh, away. McKinnon just doing Hands what he can free. get away with. Doubling up on the left hook there. Berridge had his right hand down. Was tagged. Referee is Chuck Lucas, and he wants Stop. to let him Break. fight. Step then back. he breaks him when Box. they get tied up. Nice job, Chuck. McKinnon's starting to look for that left hand. Hitting and holding Watch from Berridge. in there, boys. Referee talking to them. Don't hold. Work away. Work out of it. Your hands are free. Good instructions. Good refereeing. Break. Then he Step breaks. Back. Super job by the Box. ref. Oh, he's talking well to them. McKinnon just getting, uh, Berridge rather, just getting a little wide in his shots. Like to see him shorten up his right hook in particular. See how he's reaching more? Yeah, he is reaching, mate, but he's still in control. Break, boys. Step back. Down punch. Still in control. He's dictating Box. the flow. McKinnon's got to start to put a bit more work together himself. The simple Stick reason break. if Berridge gets Stick out back. to five, six I rounds ahead, it's a okay, long box. way to come back, even in 12 rounds. Yeah, well, on the Hydrate Zero scorecard right now, he's behind by three. That's mine. It's not official. But I would expect that the judge, of course, they could have given break. the third round to uh, McKinnon. It was, it was close enough that they might have given to him. Okay. Box. Heads came together. That happens with a taller guy. Against the shorter guy, it happens with the southpaw. Watch their front feet get tied up, and occasionally you'll see a trip. You'll see them step on each other. Good shot by a camera guy showing us that as we talk about it. Here you've got to be cautious about the left hook. Work He's out just of leaving there, himself open with that right hand, and McKinnon has a nice tight left hook. A little bit of frustration I'm noting by Burge right now. He's tired of messing around with this guy. He wants to pick up the pace. He wants to land with some power. He doesn't need to. He's fighting and boxing well, and he's won every round. But now here he is switching around again. Here's the left hook. Slipped the right hand, but the left hook, even though there wasn't a lot on it from McKinnon, and he threw it. And that just stops Berridge from slipping again. It brings him in line to his own right hand. McKinnon, he's very economical with his punches. And that's that short, chopping right hand. 
Leg away, boys. Your hands this are free. This is really a tough, hard boxing match. This is really good professional boxing, folks. People say to me, where are the good boxes? These are two good boxes. This is good stuff. Nice move by McKinnon not to get hit that time. Look at this. How do you like it? How do you like it? Well, one punch after the bell. If you look at the left eye of McKinnon, he has a nasty little mouse developing. Robbie Berridge, his power starting to show through. In that round, very much an even round, maybe even McKinnon's round, but Berridge's power is evident. So he's cut over his right eye. Don't buy into that scratch. Underneath his left, he has a mouse. This is the short right hand of McKinnon, just trying to sneak inside of the left hand of Berridge. And that was possibly the shot that caused the mouse. And the boys, a bit of feeling now in the fourth round, closing it out with some spirit. Come on, mate. Come on. Here, mouse guard. Here we go. Here we go. Really good stuff. Break a load of my personal baggage as West Bank Bank here in New Zealand. Warning woo. Thanks for the five men you gave me the other day. <laughs> here we go. And Robin, you wonder why I love New Zealand, huh? This is a really good fight, round five. McKinnon now starting with a bit more urgency, trying a few more punches. He's very tight with his punches, compact. Very slightly the wider of the two. You know, Mike, he needs to be because I've given the first four rounds all to uh, Robbie. Right. I think Robbie's controlled everything. And you're right, the last round was a lot closer. But in professional boxing, it's about the hurt business. It's about the damage. Nice sneaky right hand that time by McKinnon on the inside. This is the kind of stuff that Burge is going to look out for. Don't get too confident because this guy can still be dangerous. This is more than a competitive bout. McKinnon starting to find his range with his own right hand. Burridge, as his corner keeps saying to him, fight smart. He switches to Southpaw again. That right hand is a sledgehammer up jab from Berridge. Caught McKinnon, and it caught him when he was switched. And see what I mean? Well, uh, well he's back right-handed now. But when he's left-handed, he misses break. punches. That's number one. Number two, Down no power. Break. Number three, okay, box. he's going to get hit more. And we only start for a second because he realized that this ain't working. Well, a, a lot of it's about defense. You go the wrong way. You There's a nice little clipping left hand from Berridge. He ain't pretty, Robbie Berich. Butcher is a good name for him, but he's brutally effective. I know, he's really a good fighter. Let him up, let him up. Watch Roy Jones Jr. be watching this tape, Box. and Roy, I know you're watching the tape. This is the guy you might have to fight. What do you think, kid? Can you handle him at your age? Uh, Roy's been in with a lot of very classy fighters. Fight in front of us, though. Daniel McKinnon in the white shorts. Robbie Berich in the black. And the southpaw stance with the tattoo on his powerhouse left hand. He's scoring more here, Mike, than is um, McKinnon. McKinnon trying to force the fight more. Making big mistakes going back and forth. Nice straight, nice straight left hand. Left. Perfect. And you can hear from ringside the thudding power of those shots from Beard. Oh, he's down with some shots here. Really hitting him good. He better answer back. Finally, he does Step what a professional does. Hang on and watch for it. He's hurt. I'm telling you, he's hurt. He he knows what he's doing. Doing. Hands under the armpits, walking forward. Only 33 seconds. There's a left hook from McKinnon. Still dangerous. Didn't shift. Burridge, though. Burridge is taking some chances there because he knows he hurt him. The corner is yelling, hands up, Burridge. Hands up, Robbie. Step back, don't punch. Kenneth is uh, some kind of tough cookie. I handled him with the left hand. But this is Burge round, no question about it. He almost had him out. Oh, watch your heads in there, boys. Right, step back. A good round here before. Very good round, but another one walked away to Robbie Burge. I get it 50. 45 on the Tim Cook Hydrate Zero scorecard. That's unofficial, Willis. Just pulling the bully right here. Nice work. Come on, Swipe. Well, they're happy with the work right. in his corner. This is where McKinnon just cute on the counter punching. You can't afford to drop your hands. 
He's there for those punches that you don't see. The slick ones on the inside, but there was the left hand that started the barrage against the ropes. McKinnon, though, experienced pro. Notice his eyes are there. He's hurt, but he's watching the shots. Took his opportunity to come and tie up the arms. And that left hook just dislodged Robbie Berridge's mouth guard. As we head into sixth round. Coaching and big boy. Boy, we've seen everything tonight. We saw split decisions we may not have agreed with. We saw no, knockouts. No, boy, step back, don't punch. We saw step some back. brilliant fighting. Stop. We saw a guy hanging there that when was getting step pummeled. Back, you don't we've keep punching. Okay. Box. Bit of spirit happening. Berridge can get a little bit wild with his shots. McKinnon, he's experienced. He will always stay tight. Yeah, Robbie's a little frustrated right now because this may be the best fighter he's fought in a long time. Well, it's been his way in his last few fights. He's bowled them over early. McKinnon's not a guy who's going to go down easy. By the way, McKinnon, 21 pro fights, 21 wins. 17 fights have gone the distance. And this one, he's right, hoping we'll right. go the distance. Step but if it does, he okay. won't get the decision. Unless things turn around dramatically in the last half of the fight. Well, his corner's pretty happy with his work in the last round. And again, that right hand, though, he's very economical with it. He doesn't throw it often, but when he does, it's accurate. The problem is, Mike, as you know, as a southpaw yourself, you're a southpaw, you got to expect that right hand coming down the middle, and he's not throwing enough of them. Well, that was a just, decent shot right there with the right hand, just we were talking about it. Yeah, Bear just taking most of them on the gloves or slipping them. Boys. Again, McKinnon's actually found a home with the Here's left hook when he's thrown it, it. it after the right hand. Hold. Good work from the referee, okay. calling them to punch Quick. out. Now, Luke, Luke is showing really... One thing I said at the convention last week with the WBC when they asked me to speak about television and officials, and I told the officials, no matter what you do, even if you're wrong, be definitive about it. Here's a right know. hand from McKinnon at Rock Beards momentarily. Now, he's the one doing the tying up. Great, boys. Yeah, Step back down, punch. Watch your heads in Much place. better round from McKinnon. Bucks. He's straight and economical with that right hand. That's uh, a push. He, he falls into the ropes, but it is a push. Know. You know, if you Come punch on, in the ropes, it. folks, and you're falling into the ropes, that's a knockdown. But that wasn't the case there. Beards needs to fire something back at this point. Look at this. He turns his cell phone. What a ridiculous thing to do. Stop. Stop. Well, he's just starting to Time dominate out. and get his rhythm with the uh, the conventional you shot. Go over there. So he wants to throw punches with less accuracy uh, and, and less power Stop. and get hit more. Quickly. That doesn't make sense to me. Unless you're Marvin Hagler. Put it yeah. in. Look, they probably have okay, worked on it in the gym just to break up Berridge's rhythm. Here. But uh, you have to Time be certain in. of it. And he hasn't looked convincing when he has switched. He hasn't wanted to stay there. Well, it's 39 seconds to go in the round, and so far... I think I'm leaning towards right, McKinnon boys, in this right, round based step on, I think he punished back. him one time. Oh, and remember, sorry. this is the hurt business, okay, and he had up. to hang on, so okay, he's hurt uh, Burgess uh, more than Burgess has hit him. Barrett's just reaching a little bit now, and that's what McKinnon's Hello. waiting for because he's short on the right hand. He's looking for a draw right hand. Nice work for right. him. Now he's starting to impose some of those tricks. Inside, he's got the holding, he's hitting and holding. Nice work, liver shot there from McKinnon off the right hand. There is now Lanny a left uppercut of his own. It's an important round, very important for McKinnon. He won that round, and even if my score is accurate, he's back in the fight now. It's 59 55. Look at this stuff. Man, this is good stuff. Well, experienced pros. And that's that little economical right hand of McKinnon. Though you see why Perridge is so dangerous. He can throw with power. And that was the liver shot again off the right hand. Great work from McKinnon. Economical with his punches. He's been 12 rounds before. On the Tim Cook Hydrate Zero scorecard, I have it 59-55 for Robbie. But if there's one other round that went the other way, this thing suddenly becomes a whole lot closer than what I believe it is right now. Significant for McKinnon is by winning that round, he puts another one together. water there again. And he's right back in this fight. 
Beeridge landing a couple of right hand, uh, left hands rather early. By the way, the corner did a nice job on that cut that went back in the second round there. McKinnon cut. And also he had that big pump right, in, his, step back. in the mouse step back, that pass. came up in the third Pops. round and they got the end swell on that. Uh, there's plenty of work going on there on the inside. Beeridge still a little bit wide. He looks awkward at times. I'll say again, I think the danger punch for McKinnon is the left hook off his right hand. And again, you see him go southpaw. What happened? He didn't land any punches and he got hit. He switched again. He, he's, right. he's persisting with that tactic. And it's ridiculous. I don't know why his corner lets him. See him? Walked right into a straight left hand. And he's getting hit now. Now he comes around. He gets a uh, sense. Another left hand. And that one was straight on the button. Usually when you see a fighter acknowledge a shot. Nice little left hook from McKinnon. This is bad and for McKinnon this. fans right yeah, now. No, because boys. McKinnon Stop. was crawling back in when he switched to get he, up and he doesn't again. need to do that. Box. He was boxing very well in the last round and nothing's going his way in this round. He's tough though. He very his shots punches. nicely there. That one going straight to the uh, the solar plex. Again going upstairs with the right hand and during his shots. A professional pro. Nice work with the head control. Box. There's a cut there. Not sure where that came from. It's underneath the eye so it's not in a dangerous position. But it is Robbie who's cut. And again, with the right southpaw ball, versus back. the right hand, you get a lot of the heads Box. coming together. It's a fairly bad cut, folks, but in terms of boxing, it's in a great spot if you have to be cut. Well, it's under, underneath the eye. McKinnon, though, has been energized by that cut. That old, come on, work it One of the best fight doctors in the world Stop. today Step back. is here. Box. He got it stitched up uh, Joseph Park on his last fight, Dr. Dan, uh, Dr. Dave. Yep, Dr. Dave and then M M Beridge rather just slipping under a couple of shots. Now McKinnon, look at that, just holding head. He's on the blind side of the referee, popping in the little annoying uppercut. Notice that head, Mike, keeps bouncing off that eye. Yeah, well, McKinnon, too, has gone to work a couple of times in the clinch, just putting it there. Evander Holyfield style. When you see a guy cut, Mike, talk about it as a fighter. It certainly ignites you. It certainly gives you an adrenaline flow. Now the boy has landed the right hook of his own. That's know, got boys. McKinnon's interest. Wait, step back. Step back. Look at McKinnon the way. The way he tied up the left hand, though. Looking at the referee. Hey, come on. Break this up for me. By the way, in spite of the cut, it's still... On it. Burridge's run. Which way the judges will go on that one, but Beric remains the aggressor. The doctor's going to come in and have a look, but it, it's a nasty yeah. cut, good inch long, but it's on the cheekbone below the eye. They'll get the adrenaline and the Vaseline working on that one. But from a fighter's point of view, you see the blood flowing, and it's a little like red rag to a bull. You know the fight can be stopped. It's a little like seeing someone wobble. You're invigorated. You know that you can hurt your man. They want ice and that, get the swelling down. It's kind of brutal the way they take care of guys when they've got that jam stuff and the anger back out there in a minute. Now, as I said to Steve McKinnon uh, a little earlier, we're not uh, necessarily uh, the average person, a fighter made of different stuff. So, Burge cut in the seventh round. The corner of McKinnon done a great job in his cut which is in a worse place back in the second round. Plus that big right, mouse right. that he had in the box. third round did McKinnon. Corners both doing a great job doctoring up their men. I was a little surprised they went a little bit late on that cut with, the, know, with the Vaseline. You know, you'd want to stem that flow early. I'm and this so is this I'm is so McKinnon's right. fight here. He'll just continue to work away, it. holding on to the arm, nudging him, rubbing the heads up. Cheeky little rabbit shots. And look right, at that there. Right. You see? Nobody's back to so. Just designed okay, to box. annoy Beerich, to make him lose his rag. But he's not. He's totally disciplined. He doesn't like the idea that he's been cut. But you're right, Mike. He's a little wide with his punches. He's frustrated. I can tell he's frustrated. Well, not too much blood flowing out of it. McKinnon short with his punches. When he does switch right, to well, southpaw, he's obviously punch. worked on a draw box. left hand. Because he's landed it a couple of times as... Beerage walks in. Nice feint that time to see which way 
McKinnon was going to go with the feint. That know. sets up the Come next on, shot. By the way, work the equipment tonight, Nick Podridge and uh, Jimmy Gloftis have done a great job in the team from uh, Punish Fight Gear. And we're glad that they can uh, supply the gloves, great gloves and supplements. So we congratulate them on behalf of, uh, of Brad Vocali, right. who filled us in on that. He's the referee in our next fight. Box. Uh, Beeridge actually breathing a little heavy. McKinnon's still looking pretty composed. Ring generalship comes into play in this, the eighth round. Nice little left nice. hook over the top. Thank you very much. I've still got the power to take you out, son. McKinnon wants to hit that cut. Watch the heads. Watch the heads. Yeah, he's, he's got it on the Look wrong side it, for the cut, but he's not above using it. Step back. You this see what, what happened that time was Barrage pulled him in so he couldn't get to the cut side. He pulled him in. Yeah, both this is tough experienced stuff. pros, you yeah. know. They're not... Come on, work out of that. Punch They're not away. urgent. They don't make rash decisions. Right. Step back. And they've been in there many times before. Pops. Both of them have been 12 rounds. That right. Body shot there, nice from McKinnon. We've seen him throw it a couple of times. It's a, it's a rip to the sternum, an uppercut to the sternum, and it really can take the wind out of you. Right. He Step throws back. that right hand, does McKinnon, then he Pops. grabs on, and you hear referee Chuck Lewis say, uh, Lucas, that is, say, uh, keep him up, guys. Boy, they, both, they both had the same idea at the same time. Now, I just said that hurt McKinnon more than he might realize. It's that shot that Barrett throws. He rolls off the right hand. Oh, that, that's, 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 that's a knockdown. When you need touches, that's Four, a knockdown. Five, Anything with the soldier you want to be seven, seven, Even though it was eight, only for a second, he has to take the eight count. Box. That's a big round now for Robbie. That makes it a 10-8 round. And look at this. This is going to ignite him unbelievably. The bell ends him. That's a huge little dip that cost him two points. Well, a little earlier, just before that left hand, and again, it's the pile driver from Robbie Berridge. He was clipped by a left hook. I don't think a left hand. I don't think McKinnon showed it so much. But doubling up on that, he momentarily lost his faculties. And here it comes. Just that hooking left hand leveraged it. McKinnon was up, but the referee, Lucas, onto it very quickly. Left hook, right on top of the eye socket, and Daniel McKinnon goes down. And by the way, he's able to get up so well, Mike, because he's in such great condition. Lucky to get knocked out with a right hand there coming up. Yeah, just grazed with that right hook. That's the danger. If you get out like that, you might as well stay down and, and take your count rather than take a chance of getting nailed coming up. Yeah. Mind you, you're a fighter. There's plenty of pride in there. He's well conditioned by McKinnon. He's come off the canvas before to win. So we go. That cut. We got water in there. So we go to the ninth round. McKinnon cut in the second. Down in the eighth. Right, boys, step back. Had a bad, bad bruise and a mouse back in the third. Then the cut happens on the cheek. Of Burridge, and, and then he drops him in the next round. Here he comes. McKinnon all at sea. Those body shots really hurt him from Burridge. Oh, oh the box goes down. This is the best. Four, he didn't like it. He was off balance. And down he went with a straight right seven. hand. I got well, it's legit, yeah, man. It was a punch. Come on, he had his man all at sea. How you great is that? be careful. How great is that when both guys have been down? Because that wipes out everything that happened. With McKinnon hitting the canvas and kind of the Wait, Lord, boys, the back. boxing lords watching out for both fighters. Well, it's certainly intriguing now. Beerage needs to be cautious himself now, not get too concerned. You know, Mike, there's a fatigue right. factor here with step both back, guys a little sloppy. Box. So you're going to see wilder and wider punches and a lot heavier punches from both right, guys boys, that stop. are desperate stop. Stop after punching, both being back. knocked down now. Box. I'd like to see a right uppercut up the middle after that left hand from Beerage. He's those body shots. I think McKinnon has been hurt to the body. His elbows are dropping when Beerage has gone down there a couple of times. He's almost ready to get down again. He gets hit. It's nailed. This might be it. Is it going to be it? Bangs him with the right hand. He should actually take the knee. He falls right, forward. Boys, he falls forward. Referee separates him. Let's see if he's got the strength in his legs. This is oh, he got nailed with a short crisp right hand. That's great right, conditioning. Right, 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 Ref says, 
Both of them are out of their feet, Mike, right now. Watch this, folks. This might be the beginning of the end. There's a lot of time left in this round. Watch Remember, this. it's Burge that was down. Nails him again. Why does he switch to southpaw? See if he can finish him. No. He hits him to the body. This could be it. That's Four, the second time he's been down. Five, the first time in this round. Six, it's at six seven, and seven. And he eight, finally gets up in the eight count. The body work early in the round had done the damage for Robbie Beeridge. He disguised it well, but McKinnon noticeably slowed down. A lot of time left in the round. 29, oh, no, 28 oh, no, seconds. Boys, break, if he can blast back. him again. Bops. Both guys down in this round. And this is a beautiful prize fight. This is what boxing's all about. This is 1930s, 1940s. 70 Bikes seconds. He's surviving now, punch. McKinnon. Bops. Intestinal fortitude, everything he is using to try and He's stay out. Hurt. He doesn't want this fight to be stopped. He better do something. He better answer. The referee wants to stop it. He's oh, man. He just survived, Mike. I can't believe it. Well, he was all at sea, like sails in the wind. Daniel McKinnon, he has been hurt. I suspect it is to the body. There were volleys of punches from Robbie Berridge. Even though he got the knockdown, McKinnon from a flash right hand, actually from the southpaw stance too. It was a legitimate knockdown. Berridge throwing caution to the wind. But a little earlier than that, the flurry that had him going backwards, there were volleys of punches to the body. And Berridge came forward wild and butcher style. And that liver shot and works to the body. He wow. did not want to be there. It took all his intestinal fortitude, all the iron content in his character to survive. After Burge goes down, he comes back. This is a sign of a great champion. One like Larry Holmes, who came off the canvas three times to beat guys that actually had him knocked out. Let's see what Burge does now. He should be able to finish him here. Because know, there's no boys, way McKinnon can recover from the hard knockdowns, and he's, okay, but he's as tough stop as punching, nails, and he's in great shape. So I did up a bit. It'll depend on whether or not there's actual rib damage to the body. Oh, oh. there's rib damage for sure, Mike. He's really pummeling. No, no, you called it early in the Break. last round. Step he's back. breaking him down, Box. he's breaking him down. You called all those shots. Well, he's going to look for something now, McKinnon. If Break. his ribs are hurt, he'll be stop more slinging. defensive okay. and look for a single Box. shot. He knows he can hurt Berridge. He caught him with that little right hand, and he throws it well. Burridge has got to go back down, bang this. him to the hold. body, bang him right work in that liver, which is away. what you're looking at right now. Okay, the right break. side step of the rib cage. If he Box. does, the guy's going to go down. That's Work. what he has to do. Forget the head. Just get him in the body. I'll set it up with it. There's a little right hand there, and again from McKinnon. McKinnon, every once in a while, when you think he's done, he battles right, back. Boys. These are two consummate Box. professional fighters. Doesn't get any better than this. Well, this is the 10th round of 12. It is a title right. fight. PABA, light heavyweight, and Box. WBA. WBO, rather, Oriental, light heavyweight crown on the line. Paco Vacasel, president of the WBO, would love this one. Watch your heads in and there. And I'm sure he's got it on satellite back in right, Puerto boys, Rico. Right. I'll tell you what, McKinnon's okay, actually Box. winning this round so yeah, far. he is. He is. But oh, there's a lovely little rip on the stop, inside off the stop. right hand. <laughs> McKinnon with the dirty boxing. Your head up, sir. A lot of time punch. in this one. Both of these guys are gassed, and they're both dangerous, and they're both vulnerable. Come on, punch away, boys. McKinnon, you're right. He's winning this inside war right now. I didn't think he'd have enough to survive the round. Stop. This stop. is a right. tough, tough battle right. between two very experienced players. Right. Robbie Beer is fatigued. They both are. He, he tired himself trying to finish McKinnon in the last round. Folks, I'm telling you, you're watching professional boxing right now at its very, very best. Great for Hydra okay, Zero, great you for New Zealand boxing, great for Duco. Oh, well, he's taking the doctor, taking Come him over to the doctor. Oh, no, it was a mouth guard. Nothing to do with Come the on, cut. Berridge looking at his corner. You see him, he looked Come over on. to the corner, he nodded. Experienced fighter once again. Okay, box, look at the look at his face. He knows what he has to do. This is when the road works. This is when all that you put in in the gym. This is when Watch it pays up. This is championship time. This is what great champions are made of. That right hand wobbled McKinnon. McKinnon's out on his feet right now, and there's a lot of time, 39 seconds. Breath is going to stop him. He goes down through the ropes. Nobody can help him. He He's going to get in on his five, own. Six. It's up to seven. seven.
And he's... Eight. You all right, son? Well, that's his uh, third time back. You're going to need a lot more. Okay. His so eye is go. almost closed. He but. said, I'll let it go a little bit longer. He's hurt badly. Still 12 seconds. One more shot. He's stop, stop. It's all over. All over your side. Good stoppage. Great, great, great fight. I absolutely loved it. I love Robbie Barrage. Daniel McKinnon, you got my heart. You got the heart of a champion. You went out on your shield like Richard the Lion Hearted. Well, Daniel McKinnon, the king, well, he has been dethroned. The butcher has risen from grassroots to dethrone the king. McKinnon, it was a brave performance, but in the end, just a little bit slower, and the power of the brutal butcher shone through. I tell you what, though, you couldn't ask for a better co-main event in the lead-up to Tua Ustinov. There's no way you could have a better fight. I mean, both guys are cut. One guy cut really early, then a bad mouse that they get out of control. And all of a sudden, Burge is cruising through the fight. Round six, McKinnon turns it around, shows his courage, shows his conditioning. Then Burge gets cut in the 10th round. And then all of a sudden, guys get down. They're falling like trees, up and down, up and down. It's unbelievable. All right, here's our ring announcer, oh, Lieutenant Dan. Movies. Ladies and gentlemen, with two minutes and 51 seconds into round number 10, your winner by referee stoppage, fighting out of the red corner, Robert the Butcher My friends, you have just witnessed what might be hey, can we please the round, have a round of, the year, of the fight of the year. Worldwide. It doesn't Daniel get any better than that. Well, could you have asked for any more suitable lead up? This was a feisty bragging rights battle. They were both down at seesawed. Berridge early with the cut and the mouse. McKinnon went behind after the first four rounds, but then he came back into it. That short, sharp right hand of his in the left hook. My this goodness was a gracious, this fight. Is unbelievable. What a night for boxing in New Zealand, Michael. You're a professional prize fighter. This is great, as I said, for Duco, for the world of boxing in Kiwi land. This is going to be considered one of the fights of the year. Because when I get back to the States, I'm going to put this in and nominate this for the fight of the year. And we only got a couple of months to go. So, uh, man, this is great stuff. Look at that. A great work from the cameraman. Got the mouth guard shiny. I've got to say, the Sky Crew did a great job. And as this bout went further and further on at Seesaw, we had eight counts from either fighter in the same round. It was the one that started it. The first one, a flash knockdown off the left hook. I mean, the scene is set, Colonel. Man, I, I'm... I hope I got enough gas to do the main event. This is really great stuff. What a night for Duco. That short little right hand from the South Force stance that we criticized him for. And he gets it through. But the body shot here from Berridge, the body work that came earlier in the round. The liver shot really worked here. The One, two, Mike, three, you, high, boom. You called this. You talked about the body work. You could almost force it because you're a fighter. You know what it means to get hit like that to the body. Well, you see a fighter cramp up and all of a sudden his work rate, his work rate stops. And here it was. It was war back in the trenches. Both boys bloody, bruised. But right. in the end, too much. Clint Robbie Brown Barrett. is standing by. Clint's with an absolute warrior. Go ahead, my man. Clint, take it away. Uh, we're watching this replay one more time. That's the stoppage at the end of the fight. And now I think we're set to go to Clint Brown. Go ahead, Clint. We just watched the stoppage of the fight. Yes, we're very excited here ringside for the big uh, David versus Goliath. But Robbie Butcher, the Butcher Berridge, and Daniel McKinnon. What a great fight. Congratulations, mate. What was your take on that bruising battle?
First of all, I'd like to say um, this fight's for my grandfather. Uh, hey, Grandy. Uh, second of all, to McKinnon's fans, you made me work harder for this. And third of all, to the gyms that I train at, Redline and Ticker, this got me through the fight. Mate, you both got cut, you both went down. How tough was that and what was the turning point for you? Uh, that was the toughest fight that I've had so far. Well done to Dan McKinnon. Awesome fight. Um, I don't know, I just... I know, I just felt like it was mine from the get-go. I'll tell you what, um, could you hear your trainers calling out the instructions during the fight because there's so much noise going on, the crowd's making noise. Could you actually hear what they were giving you to say uh, out there in the ring? Yeah, I definitely heard them. Um, I didn't take note, though. As you can tell, I got a bit of a cut and took some shots, but uh, next time, yeah, it won't happen. OK, Dan, come on over. Daniel, hometown boy from Otorohonga. Mate, you took an absolute battering, but you gave an absolute battering. How are you feeling? Oh, not too bad. Um, I mean, yeah, started to get a little bit gassed. Didn't have the best prep, but, you know, I had a head off to uh, Robbie. Got me with a good shot. Um, I feel recovered now, but he only got 10 seconds in the ring, so... Hard night at the, at the office, mate. One of your hardest? Uh, nah, I would say I've had harder fights, but you know, he got me with a good shot and I just didn't get recovered in eight seconds, so didn't come back. All right, disappointment for you. What's up next, mate? Oh, you know, that's something I have to talk to with my team. We'll have to look at um, rescheduling my career now and see where we go to from here. All right, who do you want to thank? Oh, man, I've got a lot of people I want to thank. Um, Shane Cameron, Shane Cameron Fitness. Um, you know, all my fans have come through my Otrohonga. Thanks, guys. Um, discount supplements in, uh, in Auckland. Um, Shane Cameron. Shane Cameron Fitness. You know, there's a lot of people I want to thank. And uh, all my friends, family for coming tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your support. Uh, Paul McSherry, I'd really like to thank Paul for coming on board and helping train me for this fight. Uh, Henry Schuster, Ken Rainsfield, TK Pomare. Cheers, bro. Thanks for your support. Cousin Dion, Dion McNabney at McNabney's Box Gym in Hamilton here. Um, yeah, there's, like I say, there's a lot of boys I want to thank. Chris Walker, um, Gunnar Jackson, yeah, all the boys over in Tauranga. Um, yeah, heap, heaps of guys I want to thank for, for everything. All right, Daniel, well done, mate. Bad luck on the uh, result tonight, but uh, a courageous effort up against the champion, Robbie the Butcher Berridge.